Oh, okay, so they're not literally vampires. Phew, what a relief. Oh, never mind, that's even worse. Cassette Beasts is an RPG that sends the player on a journey across an island where the bizarre is the new normal. It was developed by Bitten Studio, composed of a pair of blokes with industry experience, including their previous game, Venice Inception, an adventure game heavily inspired by The Legend of Zelda. And now they are applying what they've learned to the monster taming genre. The game launched on PC last week, and their publisher, Raw Fury, sent me a review copy at no cost. The story begins with you getting thrown into a trippy portal and falling on an unfamiliar place. After wandering for a bit, you find signs of civilization in the distance. But that's when you're assaulted by a crab with a traffic cone on its head, and rescued by a girl who gives you a cassette player and a pair of headphones that transform you into a monster form. A few good smacks later, the crab runs away and you're introduced to Kaylee. She invites you to the nearby settlement so you can change from your pajamas into something more appropriate. She also breaks the bad news to you. You're stuck here now. Yeah, I know that's a bit of a shock. The town's doctor gives you a quick checkup and then explains the situation more clearly. This is Harbor Town, located on New Wirral, a mysterious island that exists who knows where, probably not even on Earth. It's also riddled with dangerous beasts, but people here can use obsolete technology to grant them superpowers. I'm sure you have many questions. Once you put on some swag and spend a few minutes getting accustomed to the town, you join Kaylee for her daily patrol. She mentions that there was some kind of earthquake last night, and the two of you are going to investigate that. This leads you to an abandoned train station that pops out of the ground, and inside you meet a strange creature inviting you to come closer. This is Morgante, a so-called Archangel on the verge of death. The party is forced to battle against her overwhelming strength, and you are saved in the nick of time when the two of you manage to trigger a fusion, combining into a powerful creature. One spanking later, Morgante mentions that she knows the way out of the island, but she will require a vessel and tells you to listen to her song. Unfortunately, the song is too quiet, and you can only hear the first few lines before she fades away. Once you head back home and discuss what happened, it's clear that this is the only lead you have. And so, in the hopes of finding a way back home, you decide to join forces and explore the island in search of other archangels that might reveal the rest of Morgante's song. From this point onward, the game provides you with an assortment of different tasks and lets you tackle them in whichever order you want. Finding a way home is the main objective, but how you get there and at what pace is entirely up to you. You can go straight to searching for more Archangels, or you can follow Kaylee's advice of joining the Rangers. Or you can go listen to rumors from the locals. Or you can just wander around, taking in the sights and atmosphere, seeing where each road takes you. In short, it's a story about people getting isekai to a weird place where music tapes transform you into monsters and the power of friendship fuses them into super-powered forms. Sounds stupid and, well, I guess it is, but I appreciate what this game is going for. Cassette Beasts is well aware of how absurd the situation is. It thrives in its absurdity. New Wirral is an island filled with the supernatural, where what makes no sense makes sense and what shouldn't happen happens. 
It's where people and objects from different dimensions get dropped into for no apparent reason, and the world building takes advantage of that. This phenomenon has been happening for so long that you meet people from different eras and different worlds. Worlds with similar histories, yet different from our own in big or small ways. And its inhabitants have been here for so long that they've become accustomed to it and formed their own little communities. Getting to know these people is one of the game's focal points, in particular the six partners that you meet throughout the game. At the start, you're introduced to Kaylee, who is part of Harbor Town's Rangers. They are a volunteer group that does a bit of everything, from helping the town's residents to gathering resources. Soon after, you meet Eugene, the self-proclaimed protector of Harbor Town. Initially, he makes it sound like he's fighting vampires, but in reality, they are real estate agents looking for stonks. Then there's Meredith, a nerd with a doomer complex and a knack for tinkering with machines. Felix, an artist whose apartment also got dropped on New Wirral, and somehow the drawings he made as a kid have come to life. Viola, who speaks in a chivalrous way and has been wandering the island alone in search of her brother Sebastian. And finally, there's Barkley the dog. That's it. That's the character. Your relationship grows not just from fighting together, but also by following their quest lines. You will learn about their past, their dreams, their motivations and you're encouraged to befriend them for more than story reasons, since one of the combat's key mechanics is directly connected to how strong your bond is. It's that good old tale of story and gameplay working in tandem, with the power of friendship paying dividends. But most important of all is to enjoy your time here. Yes, you have to find the Archangels so that you can go back home, but there's no need to rush. You're stuck here, might as well take in the sights and make the most of it. It's a dire situation, but the game avoids painting it in a grim undertone, and instead covers it in a mostly chill atmosphere through its combination of characters, graphics and music. From a technical perspective, there's nothing exceptional here. It's blocky 3D environments with 2D sprites for characters, inspired by the HD 2D style pioneered by Octopath Traveler. It's how it all comes together that really sells the experience. For a game with a design based around cassette tapes, it's safe to assume that the soundtrack is one of its highlights, and that checks out. When you're out exploring the island, you get bombarded by soft tunes and melodies, especially at night. The Harbour Town music is probably my favorite track in the entire game, especially the version with vocals that plays inside buildings, because its lyrics perfectly encapsulate the atmosphere. That feeling of losing yourself in a mysterious unknown world, and just going along with it. All these weird creatures running around, camping with your friends in the middle of a forest, it's the kind of saccharine silliness that puts a smile on my face and makes me feel like a kid who just got a new toy for Christmas. Most of the soundtrack doesn't have multiple versions, but all of the battle music does, using its vocals to emphasize the moment. When you trigger a fusion and start pounding on the boss, or when everyone comes together to give the villain a galactic middle finger. Yeah baby, that's the stuff. Inject it straight into my veins. Of course, then you have the Archangels. Most creatures might look like serial mascots, but these things don't belong, quite literally. Their presence distorts the fabric of reality, and all of them are rendered using a different visual style that sets them apart from the rest of the world. 
No points for guessing that the game goes a bit meta near the end, when it explains the nature of New Wirral and why all of this wacky bollocks happens. But not in a pretentious way that doesn't fit the atmosphere of the rest of the game. Ultimately, Cassette Beasts is a light-hearted game. Well, aside from that one scene when a guy got turned into paste. That certainly was some whiplash. Oh, and that gut punch when you meet Barkley. But otherwise, yeah, it's pretty charming, and I felt a bit sad at the end, when the adventure came to a close. The island itself isn't terribly large. It's divided into small chunks with hidden secrets and events scattered throughout, and at the start some parts will be blocked by obstacles, but eventually you will be able to overcome them with new abilities unlocked by catching certain monsters. Abilities such as the Bulletino Dash to break boulders, or Magnetism to pull yourself towards, uh, magnets. But Morgante's song isn't always the same, because it's actually a set of instructions pointing to the portal leading to the final area. Those are also random, so there's a dose of replayability for you. The true merit of the exploration is that you continuously discover all kinds of oddities throughout the island, and all of it will eventually lead you to the end goal. Every strange rock formation, every castaway island might be hiding something, and that's probably where the experience the developers got from making Venice Inception truly paid off. But the world is also populated by enemies, and they all move and behave in different ways. The moment you touch one, a battle starts. The basic gist of it is that you can carry up to six tapes at once, and both you and your partner can transform into each tape's monster, and take turns at beating up enemies. You can catch monsters by recording them using a variety of items with different grades of effectiveness. The character doing the recording is locked into their human form during a turn, and the more damage you inflict on enemies, the higher the chances that you will succeed. Enemies can't be defeated while being recorded, so give them as much of a walloping as you want. This is tied up by some fantastic animated sprites for every monster and their fusion. Sure, not everything is totally unique, since the fusions basically stick different bits from both monsters together in a coherent way. But given the insane amount of combinations possible, custom animations for literally every single result would be unfeasible. So this is the compromise the developers found, and in practice the result is pretty good. The player's appearance is also fully customizable, and I appreciate how flexible the difficulty adjustment is, letting you choose how smart or stupid the AI is and how powerful they will be in comparison to the party. Completing the story then unlocks features that add replayability, such as more randomization and permadeath. Modding support is always cool too, although I hope the studio can get Steam Workshop integration working in the future. Delving deeper into the combat, it's centered around managing your action points, or AP for short. Characters start battles with two points, and recover another two at the beginning of each turn. Every attack has a cost, so the idea is to balance your usage of weak and cheap attacks or strong and expensive ones. While transformed, the stats from your human form and the tape's monster species are combined, but both have separate HP bars. When a tape's HP drops to zero, it's unusable until you repair it at a resting place. You can transform into any of your remaining ones on the next turn, but any excess damage is applied to your human HP, and you're vulnerable until you transform. Suffice to say, if your human HP drops to zero, it lights out. The fusion gauge increases whenever you take damage, and once it's full, you can trigger a fusion between the two active tapes. 
This transforms you into a powerful creature with great reboosted stats, double AP recovery and access to all moves from the two tapes. However, it does mean that you only get one action every turn, and you become the target of both enemies' attacks. Growing your relationship with the partner characters becomes of utmost importance here, since every rank grants a stat bonus, and rank 2 unlocks a very strong move called Fusion Power. Winning battles earns you resources that can be exchanged for items as well as experience points for both the player and the tapes. Characters grow in level and continuously increase their stats as you'd expect, while tapes instead have star ranks. Their base stats increase by 2% with each star, and at 5 they can evolve into a more powerful beast. Each star also grants them new attacks and passive abilities, referred to as stickers. The unique part is that stickers can have multiple rarities with random bonuses, and they can also be freely removed and assigned to any other compatible tape. This includes the stickers that are naturally earned by monsters, which effectively means that every star grows your overall collection of attacks. Another interesting aspect of combat is the chemistry system. Every monster has its own type, and all of them have multiple matchups that cause status effects. There's a ton of them to keep in mind, but thankfully the interface points it out before committing to an attack, and most of them make logical sense. For example, using a fire attack on a nice target turns them into the water type for 3 turns, while using fire on a plant type will cause them to take damage every turn. Meanwhile, the Astral type cripples the four basic elements, reducing the enemy's AP recovery and increasing their own when being hit. The intention is to incentivize the player to devise clever strategies instead of relying on brute force. It's also important to mention that some attacks are typeless and inherit the creature's type. You can also find bootleg tapes, whose type is different from the normal. In theory, chemistry provides an engaging alternative to spamming attacks, especially because you have to work around your limited action points. In practice, it isn't worth thinking about for most of the game. The issues come from two factors, first one being the asymmetry between types. Effects such as air creating walls after being hit by fire, or air decreasing fire's attack power on hit, are universally useful regardless of the situation. It's the same with astro types manipulating AP recovery, crippling the enemy while bolstering themselves. However, effects that change the target's type aren't, because they don't give you a tangible benefit. Yeah, you've melted an ice type, turning it into water. What exactly did it do for you? Probably nothing. Effects that cause damage over time aren't totally useless, but the damage they inflict is pretty minimal compared to what you can do with a single attack. The second factor is that the structure of the game undermines the entire system. The majority of battles are too short for long-term plays to be useful. Again, changing types or inflicting damage every turn isn't worth it when enemies fall in 2 or 3 hits anyway. Sure, status effects are attached to the character rather than individual tapes, but when battles generally feature two enemies at most, you're better off focusing on raw power rather than elaborate strategies. The exceptions are the battles against the captains, since they're decently tough and employ a number of unique tactics against the player. But besides those, I feel like the chemistry system didn't add much past the first couple of hours. It could have been very useful against the Archangels, but those don't even have a type, so it doesn't matter. 
I also wish that relationship bonuses were more unique. Besides fusion power, it's just an extra 5% stat boost every rank. There's no option to disable animations to speed up combat either, which is a shame. Besides that, I just have a couple of nitpicks. The first is that dashing is extremely limited at the start, which seems unnecessary. The second is that I'd like to see official support for frame rates above 60. You can manually unlock it through the config file, and at least from the little I've tested, there doesn't seem to be any downside to it. But none of this hinders the experience enough for me to not give Cassette Beasts a recommendation. It's already a well-polished game in its current state, and Xbox and Switch versions are also planned to come out later this month. It's priced at 20 euros, which I think is a great price, but there's also a deluxe edition that includes the soundtrack and an art book. It's also available through the Xbox Game Pass, so if you have a subscription, you can play it on PC right now. But whichever way you prefer, Cassette Beasts is good fun, and most certainly worth losing yourself and your time in its strange lands.